often in life we encounter situations where we describe scenarios effectively using physical variables. For example, when the tire pressure monitoring system or the TPMS sensor in our cars warns us about low tire pressure. Or when we ask a friend or a colleague if he or she is still running a temperature. In a similar manner, a fluid flow is described using physical variables. These parameters include density, pressure, velocity and temperature. We will later use mathematics to string these variables together into various terms of the governing equations to describe the motion of a fluid. We are not going to concern ourselves with the governing equations or their solution. But we are going to learn about some tools that are commonly used to describe the fluid both quantitatively and qualitatively. At this point, it is sufficient to know that we need to use these variables to assess if a fluid is moving fast or whether a fluid is hot and so on. There are two ways of obtaining information about the flow field. One way is to estimate the flow solution through mathematical models and the other way is based on mapping the flow field through rigorous experiments. To do this, we have to first fix a certain spatial coordinate system. The first and the simplest one is the Cartesian coordinate system. In this system, we use three axes x, y and z to define points in space. These coordinate axes have the following unit vector directions in the x, y and z directions respectively. A vector r can be used to define a point x, y, z in space. r is referred to as the position vector. We use a velocity vector to define the velocity of the fluid and its definition is in terms of its individual components u, v and w along the x, y and z directions respectively. Other scalar quantities such as pressure and temperature are functions of both space and time. Depending on the nature and geometry of the problem being solved, we use other coordinate systems such as cylindrical or spherical. The primary reason for choosing a certain coordinate system is to describe the geometry. The need for these coordinates stem from the fact that spherical and cylindrical bodies are difficult to describe using the regular Cartesian system. We define the cylindrical system of coordinates in terms of r, phi and z. Here, r is in the radial direction of the cylinder, phi represents the angle along the circular cross section and z refers to its height. The corresponding unit vectors are highlighted here. Similar to a Cartesian system, the velocity of the fluid at a given point can be represented using its components in the r, phi and z directions. In a similar manner, we define the spherical system of coordinates using r, theta and phi. Here, theta is the angle in the azimuthal plane and phi is the angle in the equatorial plane. We can again define the velocity of the fluid at a point in this system using the unit vectors er, e phi and e theta respectively. During this course, we will recall these coordinate systems as necessary to present a comprehensive understanding of different flow fields. Now that we are familiar with the coordinates, let us examine where we would apply our analysis. Most engineering applications can be broadly categorized into two main thermodynamic systems, closed system and open system. Closed systems do not exchange mass across its boundaries. In other words, the total mass of the fluid in a closed system remains fixed. In open systems, however, mass transfer takes place with the surroundings. In these systems, mass can cross 
the system boundaries. It is important to note that energy exchange between the systems and its surroundings occurs in both closed and open systems. When no mass or energy exchange occurs between a system and its surroundings, such engineering systems are called isolated systems. An internal combustion engine is a good example of both closed and open systems. It has four strokes. The intake stroke where fuel air mixture enters the cylinder, the compression stroke where the mixture is compressed, the expansion stroke where a spark is used to ignite the compressed mixture resulting in the expansion of gases in the cylinder and the exhaust stroke where the generated exhaust gases are expelled out of the cylinder. The intake and exhaust strokes are examples of open system where mass enters and exits the piston cylinder assembly of the four stroke engine. On the other hand, the compression and expansion strokes are examples of a closed system. In both these strokes, the intake and the exhaust valves are closed and no mass transfer occurs between the piston cylinder assembly and its surroundings. Flow fields can be described both quantitatively and qualitatively using solutions of mathematical models and from real experiments conducted on the flow field. The flow field can be visualized using certain mathematical definitions called streamlines and these can be obtained both from math models as well as by employing visualization techniques. In addition to this, we are able to quantify the flow field using flow variables such as velocity and pressure in both models as well as experiments. Typically, a comparison between modeling and experimental measurements provide a good comprehensive understanding of the flow physics. We generally plot both modeling and experimental results together on the same plot to compare them. We will learn to describe the flow field both qualitatively as well as quantitatively.